So, that it means the temporary difference is going to be this minus this, and that's going to be what? 500. Now, as you can see, this is negative, true or false? Because this is less than this. So, we are saying that if the temporary difference is negative, it leads you to what? A deferred tax asset. Why? Because you are telling the tax authority that if you sell this asset, you will make a loss. And if you are making a loss, then you will claim what? A tax difference. Or you, the tax authority will grant you the tax leave on that loss that you are making. That is why it becomes a deferred tax asset. It doesn't mean, you don't get it. When you sell this asset, you make loss. If you make loss, do you pay tax? No. Rather, you claim a grant from the tax authority. So that becomes a deferred tax what? asset. Now, the opposite is true. So look at the opposite, then you will get this picture. The opposite is that when your carrying value is greater than the tax base, like this, or your temporary difference is positive, meaning you're going to be making profit when you sell the asset. So on that, you will have to pay tax. So that is the two things you need to understand about deferred tax. Mm -hmm. This $2,500, yeah. $2, are we talking about the asset or the tax components of the asset? Mm -mm. We are talking about how the asset is being carried. As you saw in my statement here, I didn't say the tax on the assets or the tax on the investment. I'm talking about how it is being carried by the tax authority and by the entity. So not the tax effect on the transaction, sorry, on the asset itself, but how we carry it based on depreciation impairment and how the tax authority carries it based on capital allowance or at cost, if it's an investment. Sounds good. This is a very fast fundamental accounting standard. And deferred tax is an issue many people don't like. But. So when you get the BT, uh -huh. uh, 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 BT, and then you strike the PR on it. DT? That gives you the deferred. Yeah, the TD. You, you have to strike it. Yeah, so that's why you say deferred tax is the temporary difference and the tax rate. We'll be solving a question in a moment. So this is how we account or treat deferred tax. And as I said, I didn't give you definitions. I gave you understanding. So make sure you understand what we said. So if now the examiner should ask you, what is the tax base of an asset? What would you say? If the examiner should say, what is temporary difference? What will you say? Then if the examiner should say, what is deferred tax? What would you say? So back to you. What is it? <laughs> so now let's do English discussion. Me, my 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 in the Indian English discussion. What is the tax base of an asset? The cost less the accumulated capital allowance. Okay, that's correct. Uh -huh. Then what is the temporary difference? What is temporary difference? The current value, the difference mm -hmm. between the current value of the asset. And the tax base, base of the asset. You see, this is one thing I want you to understand. The reason why some of these things I don't give, that I don't just talk theory, and I prefer to present like this, is because this is what it is. You can read, but you won't get the understanding. But if you know that, if you have it in your mind, so that you don't have to chew baba. Because if you understand this thing, it means you're not chewing baba. So when the examiner now asks you what is tax base, you know that 
tax base should be from the tax authority, which is cost minus what? Accumulated depreciation. So when you say tax base is the uh, value of an asset carried by the tax authority where the capital allowance is subtracted from the cost of the asset, boom, you get it. So it is this formula you've coined into what? An English word or an English sentence. They don't even ask. They hardly ask. They hardly ask. They hardly ask. They hardly ask. So it is the calculation aspects that you have to look out for. I think you will get an ebook on everything, so maybe you can get the definition specific if you want. All right, so that is about the issue in relation to the first tax. Now, I will then no, because when there is a deferred tax, we would have to look at the accounting treatment for the deferred tax. So let's look at the accounting treatment of deferred tax. So if it is if it is given, you just take the tax rate and then multiply it, then you get a deferred tax. But, but then if the temporary difference is given, you have to find out if it is is it positive or negative. So that you determine whether it's an asset or a liability. If it's an asset, maybe I will If it is an asset, now this so that is what I want to touch on actually here. Now if it is a deferred tax asset, meaning it will reduce our total tax or liability for the period. But you see, then if it is a liability, it will increase our tax liability for the period. But the idea about income tax is that when it comes to looking at the income tax, we actually bring everything in totality. What do we mean? For instance, in the trial balance, there may be balance brought forward on any of these guys. If it is a liability, we add it. Liability. If it's a balance brought forward and it is an asset, deferred, meaning what? We will subtract. Because an asset is a gain, liability is what? An outward. Then during the year, Current year tax or current year tax provision will increase our tax liability, isn't it? So we add it to it. Then we're going to close it at the end of the year about what we are doing, the brought down of our carry forward, if we want to put it that way, the carry forward of the fair tax or brought down of deferred tax, maybe also a liability we will add, or maybe an asset we will subtract. Now, so whatever it is, this total must be equal to what is what? Above here. So the balancing figure becomes the income tax for the year. Do you understand? <laughs> I'm going to put in figures that you understand it. So let me put this up. Let's say in the trial balance, the examiner said balance brought forward for liability. They bring it up. So what you are doing now here is for workings of the income tax you will take to the income statement, like my first illustration. So whatever liability brought forward, Pause on this. I'm going to chip in something. Whatever liability on the brought forward, we bring it up. So balance brought forward. In the trial balance, remember, if it is a deferred tax liability, bring it. It will be added. So let's say whatever. We put it there. Then if there is a deferred tax asset in the trial balance brought forward, what do you do? Subtract it because I said that Deferred tax asset reduces what? Your tax liability. So you subtract. 
Then, during the year, the current year tax provision. Remember, I told about, I talked to you about it in the beginning. So the current tax provision will be added. Why? Because it will increase what your tax liability. Then there was something I forgot to bring here. The issue about over or what? Under provision. That will also be in the trial balance. Whatever it is, if it was over, what do you do? You add. If it is under, what do you do? Are you getting the idea? No, I think I did the opposite. Because we are in the tax liability. We are in the tax. So if it is over, you're going to be subtracting. And if it is under, you're going to be what? Adding. Do you get that treatment? Because I mentioned that if it is over provision, subtract it from the current year tax or add it to profit. That was what I said. Then if it is under provision, add it to the current year tax or subtract it from the profit. So whatever it is, we deal with it here. Then this is what I'm saying. At the end of the year, we will have closing balances for deferred tax. TMEA. We will have closing balance for deferred tax. This closing balance for deferred tax could be an asset or what? A liability. Whatever it is, remember, for this one, you will be calculating it. This will be given, this will be given, this will be given. But this is what you will be calculating in the footnote. Normally, the last item when you're preparing the income statement. So this is what you will be calculating. So whatever calculation you get, if it is a liability, that will be the balance that will have to be what? Carry forward to the next accounting year. Are you getting the idea? So that's what has to be carried forward in the next accounting year. So if that is what has to be carried forward, what we are saying here is that the balancing figure of this becomes the charge for the income statement. So meaning the closing balance is given. No, you will, that's what I'm saying, you'll be calculating from the footnote of the question. And when we are solving questions, you will get to understand this. Okay, so when I calculate the closing balance, mm -hmm. then I put it there, yeah. then balance it, and then that balance is that we can go for the year. The over and under, can you, I want to talk about the... Practical way. Okay, we can, we can, we can. If it is over, I said that, so you, have, you said you should pay 100, or you want to pay 100. This is the provision we made last year. But the tax authority came and said you should pay 50. So you have done an over provision of $50. Meaning, this will reduce how much tax liability you are supposed to pay this year. That is why we will subtract it from the current year tax. Right. So that is what you got to be understanding. And as I mentioned, we're going to be looking at this later on when we are solving the question. So at the end of the day, the tax that we charge for the year is actually going to be incorporating this, 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 and this at the end of the year. Now, how is deferred tax treated? Deferred tax usually, this is a ta income tax account, so certainly this guy goes into the income statement. Now, so in the balance sheet, what do we bring in the balance sheet? In the balance sheet, normally we go under non-current liability and put there under what? Deferred tax. Why does it go under non-current? Because it is not something we expect to pay in the next six months. So that is the idea about deferred tax. So when we understand deferred tax, then that will lead us to the next thing called movement in deferred tax. But before I get there, we need to solve some questions so that at least it becomes reasonable and practicable for us. So maybe let me write it down. <laughs>